Good morning traders. Welcome to Wave Time. I am going to show you today how to analyze silver using Elliott Wave Analysis. Many of you are familiar with my techniques as explained in my book 5 Waves to Financial Freedom. I am sure you are also frequent visitors to my blog wavetimes.com where there are hundreds of examples using Elliott Wave Analysis. It is always good to start any analysis with the big picture. So let us start with the weekly chart to first establish where we are in the big scheme of things. Later on, we will go down the time frames to determine our strategy for the near term. In this chart, we start from a significant high that was posted in the week of May 1st, 2011 and the high scene was 49.51. From there, it is clear that there was a three wave down move which we label A, B and C. I will now draw some Fibonacci projections to show you how the waves were related to each other. I click here, go to the top of the movement over there, drag it down to reach this point, then go up to the wave B level and release the cursor and you can see that wave C was almost equal to wave A. This is a typical relationship for the alternating waves within a correction. If the wave B had gone to the top of this level, then we would have said that this was a flat correction. However, since wave B fell short of the top, clearly this is a zigzag correction. And once we have a three wave zigzag correction, it, it follows that either we start on the next impulse wave or it's going to unfold into a double zigzag. The way the movements have been happening until now, unless this explodes up, I would err in favor of the view that we are going to go down once more after we correct this first zigzag. Let us figure out how we can do that. At the end of the first zigzag, we normally get a corrective wave called an X wave which separates the first set of zigzags from the second. And the X wave could take any form. We cannot anticipate what form it will take. But there are some clues as the markets unfold. For example, you have a three wave move here, A, B and C. And then we have this down move. So this ABC is a flat correction because this B wave came quite close to the start of the A wave. However, can the whole move be called an A wave of a higher degree, ABC, and then we have a B wave here? That looks to be the most likely scenario because you have a flat A made up of three waves and then a B wave made up of three waves again in which case we should have a five wave rally here as a C wave which will not go too far above this. It is expected to finish at or just around these levels. In order to get more comfortable with that view, we should go down one level in the time frame. We go down to the daily chart. Remember that this is a weekly chart. Now that I have displayed the daily chart, I am interested to show you some Fibonacci retracements that are quite revealing. If you start from this top and drag it down up to here, this analytical tool, we see that this first wave up, the first corrective wave up came to almost a 50% level. Interestingly, if you measure this move 
then the correction went up to the 61.8% level. If I were a trader, I would have gladly sold here because two retracements which are coinciding around this level is quite a powerful signal. Especially when we know that we have an ABC unfolding and the C is going to be close to the top of wave A and it approaches a Fibonacci retracement of this move as well as the whole move down then that is a very powerful low risk entry point. This B wave here should be in three waves also because all B waves are made up of three waves. It is not so easy to figure out the three sub waves over here. Let me try to see whether we can zoom in there and see if we can make out those three sub waves. I go over here and take the Fibonacci projection tool, start from here, drag it up to this point, that's the wave A, then take it up here as a wave B, and then exactly at the 100% you have the wave C. This move is a 5 wave move here, so probably it ended up here. This should be the first wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, and the fifth wave of the C. So we have A, B, and C. So it went slightly over that, but it didn't go below the previous low. Even if it did go below the previous low, that would still be acceptable. It will just be called an irregular wave. So I'm going to stick with the view that this was a B wave in the bigger picture, and therefore we should get a 5 wave rally now. I have moved the chart to the left so that we can look at the C wave very closely. Once again, we use the Fibonacci projection tool and starting from here, that is the first wave of the C wave. That's the second wave. And you can see that the third wave has ended at the 361.8% projection level. Now 361.8 is not a normal Fibonacci projection target. However, I have frequently seen in my experience that extended waves do tend to have some resistance at this level. In order to verify this, one can also do the following. Look at the beginning step of the third wave. That's the first of the third wave, second of the third wave. That's the third leg of the third wave up to here. And then we come down to the fourth wave and you can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, you can see that the fifth wave of the third wave was 100% of the distance starting from the beginning of the third wave up to the third of the third wave level. So, it stands to reason that this was the end of the third wave of the C wave. Therefore, we are in the fourth wave of the C wave. Did the fourth wave end here or are we still correcting it as a complex correction? That's the question. Now look at this wave. This happens to be a simple correction of the first wave and it is pretty deep. Usually when the second wave is a simple correction, the fourth wave will be a complex correction. So in all probability, that move from here, the stop to here, was only a first step of the correction and this was the second step and therefore we'll get one more move down as a complex fourth wave followed by a rally as a fifth wave. Where can this fourth wave finish? You draw a Fibonacci retracement level like that and you get 33.13 as a reasonable level where we can expect the third wave uh, to be corrected by the uh, ensuing fourth wave. Once we get a dip here, or if we get a dip up to there, we should get look out for opportunities to buy. Okay? I have explained in several of my works that the target for the fifth wave is computed by taking the distance starting from the beginning of the first wave up to the end of the third wave and computing a Fibonacci ratio of that move. So we will do that. Start from here, 
drag it up to this point and I'm sorry I should have used the other one you take the Fibonacci projection tool you start from this point drag it up to this level and bring it down to 33.13 where we anticipate the third the fourth wave to finish 33.13 let's say around here and 36.54 happens to be the first target for the fifth wave and if it breaks above that it could go to 37.60 or 38.66 now if you go back up one step to the uh, weekly charts and squeezes a little bit let's draw a Fibonacci retracement of this whole move and we will see that at the 50% level we have 37.82 and we know that 37.60 here is one possible target for the fifth wave so what I would recommend to you is look out for a dip to 33.1015 levels and over there if the market starts looking slightly bearish you may want to go long for a move to 37 50 60 levels and then we will look at the chart again to determine whether we should take profit or not thank you very much for visiting wave times and I look forward to seeing you again in the near future.